Welcome to the third and final part. Now that the houses and corals are finished, we can finally merge some layers. The original idea behind these wavy shapes outside of the houses was to eventually merge everything together, giving the houses a sense of these details being carved out intentionally, and will also help blend the houses with the wavy texture I plan on adding later on in Painter. I also thought about which parts would be the same material and could benefit from just being one conjoined mesh instead of applying the very same material to several separate meshes. Also, I went through each layer of each model and went down in resolution in some cases, purely because I plan to import all of these houses into Blender and honestly Blender doesn't handle a lot of dense geometry really well. If you're going straight to Unreal through Painter though, this might not be a necessary step for you. With all of that said, we can finally start figuring out the village layout. Based on Omerjan's earlier concepts, the coral platforms will all have different heights and bridges connecting them. I first found a starting point where I wanted the camera slash viewer to begin moving through the village and moved all of the platforms around to accommodate that. It's sort of like figuring out a composition of an illustration, but thinking more about how the viewer will move between these platforms and buildings instead. Using the grid snap function, I could move the buildings around easily while making sure they stay 90 degrees upright and don't accidentally skew their position in 3D space, which is honestly very easy to do in VR. The grid snap function has been removed for now from the official release, but we'll be back at a later point. Some of the coral bases did need to be modified height-wise, but thanks to the warp tool, that was really easy to do. I also decided to copy some of these rails around using the link feature, which made the platforms kind of feel a bit less barren and more accommodating for the beings living here. Pickleman returns! At this stage, I also made sure to move Pickleman around and made sure that all of the windows and doorways were to scale. Lastly, I started working on the planks of the hanging bridges. Instead of making a thousand planks, I only worked on three, making sure the designs were different for each, both on the top and the bottom of the planks. For the rope itself, the best bet was to use the spline tool, Although when using both hands, controlling the slack of the spline tool is a bit difficult. Regardless, I was able to add the slack I needed by using the elastic warp tool, which if you remember, deforms the geometry while retaining the volume a bit better. Then all I need was to link copy the planks around. I also decided to use these very same planks for the ladders as well. Adding these small secondary details into the scene honestly adds so much life and also a good sense of scale to the scene. Without all of the small planks, which we know the relative size of compared to a human, it might be difficult upon first glance to tell just how big the buildings are. In the Unreal Engine scene, I'll add further detailing like foliage, bushes and birds to further cement the sense of scale. And even though Omerjan's later sketches didn't have any flags, I really liked the idea from his initial sketches, so I decided to add some in. And now that we're practically done with all of the secondary details, I decided to use the coral designs on the houses and just repeat that on the coral structures as well. That way, the overall design is a lot more cohesive, it feels like it all kind of belongs together in a scene and feels less segmented. Once I'd added all of these little bits here and there, I merged them down with the coral structures and just smoothed them out. I also at one point copied the section from one of the corals and used the knife tool to cut off chunks and reuse them in other places. Small quote unquote workflow hacks like these can really help speed up your workflow. So I advise you to reuse stuff as much as you can. All right, that's us done. Let's move on to exporting these bad boys. So via the export menu, you can choose either to export via selection or just everything at once. You also have the option to choose how the models get exported. I'm personally settling on two different settings, which is UV map triangles and raw triangles. Since I plan to remesh and create UVs in Blender for all of the houses and coral bases, I will use the raw triangles. 
However, for some of the smaller meshes, like the hanging bridges, the ladders, rails, and so on, which don't necessarily need manual remeshing and UV mapping, I just basically use the UV mapped triangles option. At the time of recording, the UV map triangles export wasn't fully optimized, so exporting bigger models like the houses wasn't really optimal and would take a painful amount of time to export. I also wanted to control the remeshing in Blender instead, because it's easier to just tell how much detail I'll be able to retain in the end, and the houses need to have a lot of details, preferably. I won't touch on the Blender part in this video series, but if you're interested in watching me tackle that, make sure to head over to Polycosm where I will eventually make a video covering that part of the workflow. In essence, I just duplicated each house, naming one high poly and the other low poly and sent the low poly version through the remesh tool with the aim of basically making the overall model less dense. That way, when in Painter, I can bake the high poly version onto the lower poly version. Speaking of Painter, let's jump into how I added some materials. I have to admit that I'm really new to Painter and still learning its ins and outs, but what I can say is that it's really easy to learn, especially if you already know Photoshop. I was able to utilize a lot of the smart materials that ships with Painter and even use the 3D Asset Marketplace to find some really nice rock materials. I also found an excellent coral material to subtly blend in with the coral material I was already working on. Let's dive deeper into the material for the houses versus the coral structures. So based on Omerjan's sketches, I knew that the houses would have a strong orange rock base similar to those mud or clay houses you find in deserts in various parts of the world. However, I knew that I wanted to add some stylized wavy lines on top of that base. For that, I basically created a fill layer with a lighter orange color. And for my mask, I used a grunge damis, damis, not quite sure how you pronounce that texture. That basically has a lot of those stylized waves that I was already looking for. I also added a layer of ambient occlusion to darken the inside parts of the building and a nice red to orange gradient coming up from the bottom of the building to about the midpoint. I also had to make the decision on what to color the trims that go around the balconies and other areas and decided on the same bright orange that keeps the overall design cohesive. And to make each house feel unique, I also randomized where I wanted parts of the house to be completely bright orange. All in all, I am actually very satisfied. While working on these materials, I did use the Send to Substance 3D Stager button to preview my scenes with better and more realistic lighting. As for the corals, I mostly used a range of different smart materials and used that aforementioned dead coral material to add more details and depth. We wanted the coral to be a lot more muted and contrasted compared to the colorful houses. That way the houses would pop a lot better. Ambient occlusion was a huge factor here as we wanted the holes that we had created earlier to be really prominent. We also decided to add a little gradient to these corals with the idea that the sand would probably have mucked up the bottom of each base quite a bit. Details like this is just another way to tell a story and increase believability in the world you're trying to create. Importing the UV map triangles directly from Modder, I was easily able to add wood material to all of the bridges, ladders and rails. All right, I mean, with all of that said, let's have a look at our final result in Unreal Engine. Before opening Unreal though, we need to remember to export our textures. For the houses, I mostly just needed a base color, ambient occlusion, and a normal map. Normally I'd import a roughness map as well, but all of the houses are supposed to have 100% roughness, so I didn't quite see the need. Importing the models into Unreal is as simple as just dragging and dropping, although I highly recommend you name all of your folders to have an easier time navigating. I just basically dumped each house model and texture set into its own folder and also just right click to create a material for each house and coral. For the background, I actually utilize a lot of the assets from the Rural Australia project 
which is completely free on the Epic Games Marketplace. I got some really nice assets, including the ground, birds, trees, mountains, and so on. So now that we've put all of this together in Unreal, let's have a look at our final animation. We are finally at the end of part 3. Hopefully you found these videos helpful in regards to how Modeler might fit into your workflow, whether that be concept art, video production, video game production, or illustration work. Modeler has certainly become an integral part of my illustration workflow and works really well with the rest of the substance package it ships with. We had a ton of fun working on this project and I hope you had a good time watching as well. Again, if you're interested in checking out the Blender and Unreal part of the workflow, or any other 2D, 3D hybrid workflow videos in general, definitely head over to Polycosm. Thanks so much for watching guys, and thanks to the entire Modeler team who worked really hard, and of course thanks to the fantastic team over at Adobe for this amazing opportunity. Bye!